Thank you. No, We're about to start the formal section of the evening, so I believe everyone's got their champagne now, so it's a good excuse to drink it. And we start the proceedings off tonight with Michael Sesco, who's going to toast the bride and groom. So it's all yours, Michael. <laughs> First of all, I'd just like to say a few little things about Mark and, well, not so much to do, more so about Mark. <laughs> when, I, when actually, when I first met Mark, um, I'm sure I left a, a lasting impression. I'll say. It was in the back of his brand new Telstar, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, one of his outstanding characteristics is his ability to forgive and forget. Right, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> I've known Mark now for about 10 years and Sue about two. I feel like I've known her a lot longer actually because Mark tells me everything. Sue's <laughs> <laughs> looking a bit nervous. <laughs> Don't worry Sue, we're talking about Mark here, not you. Oh, where was I? I should have my cards out. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'd, I'd known all about Sue even before she knew I existed. Mark uh, always used to tell me about this gorgeous blonde from dancing. <laughs> Who apparently was also very intelligent. I found that a little hard to believe. <laughs> Good looking, blonde, and intelligent. <laughs> No, since I've found they, they do exist, and I've actually even got one of my own. <laughs> um, years ago, I found out Mark was a mechanic by trade, and being the car lover that I am, I, I thought little beauty can help me out whenever I do a bit of work on the car, until I found out he enjoyed dismantling things, but he like putting them back together. <laughs> even, even as a child, actually, he was a master of dismantling things. Especially the neighbor's toys. <laughs> he was actually even known to break into the neighbor's homes while they were out and play, or should I say break, their toys. <laughs> even, even actually today, you know, things haven't changed too much, so I must say, had a little breakage here and there probably wondering why we sat him out the front away from everyone else. <laughs> and notice we've got a plastic tablecloth to cover around the front. <laughs> um, all of that aside, I must say Mark is a very unique man. He's one of my best friends. I'm very honoured to be the best man tonight. And very honoured to be one of his friends and now Sue as well. Thank you. Oh, gosh, what I start? <laughs> He's, I really consider him a very loyal, honest, wonderful, wonderful person. I've no hesitation in recommending him to his future wife. <laughs> no, now, actually, sorry, present wife now, yes. <laughs> Congratulations, Mark and Sue. Shall we all rise for the toast? Oh, sorry, no, actually, please sit. Yes, good. <laughs> Katie's told me that. Down, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Should we have Mark and Sue rise so we can all see them? Yay. Would you all like to raise your glasses, please? Mark. To Mark and Sue. Mark. Thank you. Great. We always thought we knew something about them. Now we're going to find out more. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to dog. It's all right. <laughs> Next on the list we have Rob. Who... <laughs> oh, it's such enthusiasm, isn't it, eh? <laughs> anyway, Rob is going to pose a toast to the bridesmaids. Grab your mum. Right. Um, okay. It's, uh, it's nice to be here tonight. Um, Actually, I, I really enjoyed my, my meal tonight, uh, mainly because I hate fast food. <laughs> Sorry, Omar. You, you, 
might wonder why me and uh, Mike have got our jackets still on. We we're seeing the <laughs> wanted to keep our meals down. <laughs> um, yes, well, it's uh, it's uh, it is it is quite an honour to have been uh, chosen um, uh, as as groomsmen for for Mark and Sue. Um, uh, I do consider them to be uh, two of my closest friends, and uh, but I have only known them a few years, so to have been chosen was, was quite special. So it was very nice. Um, anyway, as, as most of you all know, I, um, I met Mark and Sue at uh, ballroom dancing and uh, Mark and Sue are very keen ballroom dancers and, uh, um, and uh, as you know, ballroom dancing is quite, it's, it's a terrific sport, um, it, it's fun and it's a great venue for meeting people and, and all that kind of thing and uh, Mark and Sue have got a lot out of ballroom dancing and uh, and tonight, <laughs> tonight I'd like to uh, reveal to you a couple of stories about, uh, about Mark and Sue. Um, Mark? <laughs> um, all right, I'll just want to switch out. Lo losing it here somewhere. Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> <laughs> it shouldn't take more than half an hour. <laughs> no. Now basically, um, <laughs> right. um, what I'd like to talk about tonight, Mark and Sue both got a lot out of ballroom dancing. What I'd like to reveal is that Mark and Sue have each given something back to the sport that they love. Um, and damn it, it's about, I think it's about time that they receive some recognition. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to reveal that. Also, I'm going to reveal how uh, the real reason why Mark and Sue left for Queensland. It's not widely known, but uh, I'm going to it tonight. Now, the first story I'd like to tell you about is about Mark. Now, Mark is a Leo, and uh, like most Leo Leos, he likes to lead and to be an innovator. And uh, dare I say it, he is quite rebellious. He is, he is quite a rebel. And uh, now Mark showed that he has this streak of rebelliousness uh, in him in ballroom dancing. And funny enough, it was in the era of fashion and footwear that Mark did it himself. <laughs> this may seem strange, but it's true. It's true. Now, what Mark did was he pioneered a new look. Um, and the look that he pioneered was the the, uh, the pink glow t-shirt, uh, the uh, I'm a stockbroker braces, and the black suit look. <laughs> yeah, but where, where, where is he? Cameron. Yeah. Cameron. Oh, okay. Well, see, obviously, <laughs> obviously it caught on. It caught on, and, uh, <laughs> and he made and he made quite an impact. And um, and actually, he was making a statement. And the statement he was making was, was look out, because that was only the start, because Mark was then about to do for ballroom dancing fashion what the Sex Pistols did for rock and roll. Okay. Um, right, so just to put it into context here, as, as a lot of you all know, um, I mean, most of you will have seen uh, Strictly Ballroom, so you know what a conservative bunch they are. I mean. <laughs> Isn't that right, Adele? I mean, I've, I've seen the movie and it must be all be true. In fact, <laughs> and in fact, they make Bruce, Lux, Bruce Ruxton look camp. <laughs> but uh, anyway, Mark was about to commit the sin of all sins. What Mark did one warm summer evening was he showed up at a ballroom dancing social dressed in shorts, T-shirt and wait for it, sand shoes. Mark would walk sand shoes to a ballroom dancing function. I mean, I mean, really, I mean, it, it, this couldn't be this couldn't be allowed to continue because I mean, what would happen next? You'd have kids turning up in suede soled sand shoes, or, or worse still, if it was worse degree, you'd end up with like ecstasy warehouse ballroom dance party. So no, no, it had to be stopped. So. Uh, what happened was that, uh, was that uh, Mark was, was approached by, by someone and, uh, he, from, from the Ballroom Dancing Federation, an official, and, and they said, uh, they said, they've been reasonable people, they said, this is what they said to Mark, they said, Mark, 
If you're in communist China, we'd probably have had you shot. But, but we're much more civilized here, so we're going to give you two two choices. Your first choice is that we're going to we're going to shoot you, or the second choice is that you can piss off to Queensland. So now, folks, you know the real reason why Mark has gone to Queensland. Mark should never have worn those sand shoes that social. Uh, I got there in the end. Okay, now the second story very quickly I'd like to tell you about is about Susan. Now, now Sue is, is a lot quieter than Mark, um, but fortunately she makes up for this by being uh, very attractive and extremely intelligent. Yeah. Now, what is actually not known widely is that she invented a new branch of psychiatry. It's true. Now, it's even got a name. This new branch of psychiatry is called uh, dancing therapy. Now, I have it from a very reliable source sitting in the audience tonight, up the back, that what used to happen was that, and I'm sure you remember this very fondly, Sue, back in you know, a few years back, I'm very fond of remember this, what happened is Sue would show up at a, at a social and that she'd have a knack, or I prefer to call it a gift, that like a, a man, a strange man would ask her for a dance, with the emphasis on strange, and then, and then proceed to unburden themselves all their problems why Sue <laughs> patiently would listen for extended periods of time. Now, I'm sorry Sue, some of your old patients cannot be here tonight, <laughs> but they send their warm regards and just to take in our walk down memory street, I'd like to remind you about Old Shep, uh, the ghost, and uh, not forgetting the dirty old man. And they both they say, say thank you, Thank you for the hours of free therapy that you've had on the dance floor, and thank you for being the dear Susie of the ballroom dancing world. Okay, so about all I've got to. So as you can see, they've all contributed in their own way back to the sport that they love, and I'd just like to conclude that uh, these two are very dear to me, and I wish them uh, the very best uh, in the future. And I think with each other, they've probably got it. Now, I'd just like to, uh, I'm going to toast the, um, the bridesmaids. Now, I think they've done a wonderful job today and they look, look lovely. And could you all stand? Is that what happened? Yeah. Yeah. Could the bridesmaids all stand? Yeah. I don't know about this. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Okay, stand. And can you please um, toast the bridesmaids? To the bridesmaids. Okay, thanks for listening. Start with. We had lots of things happen today that were different, and so we're going to follow up with else something different. And Karen, I believe you have something to say. So if you'd like to come up, thanks. Yeah. Well, I wish Mark and Sue wouldn't be different, because then I wouldn't have to make a speech. <laughs> um, unlike the boys, I haven't prepared to speak. Um, mainly because I didn't have time to think about one. And I wasn't asked until yesterday. <laughs> I'd just like to say that I've known Sue for about three years now. We worked together at CSIRO. When I first met Sue, I thought that she was too sweet and innocent and nice to be my friend. So I sort of ignored her for a few months. I mean, being a librarian and everything, I thought she was a bit boring. <laughs> Librarian. <laughs> um, I'm very honoured to be Sue's matron of honour. Um, like Rob also said, he hasn't known them for that long, and I haven't known Sue for that long, so it was quite, I feel very proud that Sue asked me to be the matron of honour. Um, I know Sue and Mark will be very happy together, and it, I was very pleased to see them get married. Sue and I had many discussions about this over lunch at work. <laughs> um, I've just a little message from the girls at the tea table too. Um, we're very sad that Mark wore those sand shoes to dancing and you went to Queensland. I wish you never did it, Mark. Oh. Take away my best friends, but I'll forgive you. You're mine now. <laughs> so I've just got this little note it's from the girls at the tea table. Just remember, Sue, all the expert advice and experience we shared with you at morning tea and afternoon tea, and you and Mark will have a great marriage. <laughs> Love from the girls at CSIRO. C for chatty, or catty. S for suggestive. I for innu innuendos. 
R for riveting and O for oh we have to go back to work. <laughs> Thank you. 